welcome to Go Visit Castles. This time we've travelled to Yorkshire on the trail of King Richard III and this is Middleham Castle. After the Norman conquest of England in 1066, the land in Midland was taken from the Anglo-Saxon ruler Gilpatrick and given to William the Conqueror's nephew, Alan Rufus, who built a Motton Bailey castle a short distance from the current castle. This site was abandoned in the 12th century and the more luxurious stone keep that we see here today was built. So I'm here at the top of the Norman keep, really, really high up. And from here, you can see why the castle was built in this position. It was originally built as a Mott and Bailey castle, which we can see over here in the background. And it was built to defend the road from Richmond to Skipton. But in the 1200s, they decided to upgrade and they built the Norman keep here on this side. Although historians have argued that it probably isn't as good a defensive position as the original Mott and Bailey was. Out of all Norman keeps built in England, the one here at Middleham is one of the biggest and it's massive. It's huge! But an interesting fact about the Mott and Bailey castle, apparently if you run round the site nine times continuously, non-stop, then a doorway will open up and it will lead to the treasure hoard of Gilpatrick the Dane. In 1270, the castle was owned by the powerful Neville family. In 1440, Richard Neville, Earl of Salisbury, backed Richard, Duke of York, during the War of the Roses. Neville was captured after the Battle of Wakefield by the Lancastrian army and beheaded. I've had a very good look around, and what I found is that Midlam is actually a very defendable castle. It's built to a concentric design, which means it's a castle within a castle, with its high inner walls and lower outer walls. Now, any would-be attacker that managed to get through any of the gates would have found themselves trapped here in this killing ground, being shot at from at least two directions, from the top of the keep and from the top of the lower walls, and that's not a good situation to be in. So if you were approaching the castle in the 1400s, this is where you would have come in, at the gatehouse. It's not the original gatehouse, that was originally on the east side of the castle, but in the 1400s it was moved here and a three-storey gatehouse was built. So we would have come into the archway and we have seats for visitors, which one of them is still here. So you could have sat and waited while somebody, the constable in the tower behind you, opened the wooden doors for you. However, if you were attacking the castle, not only would you have to get through the wooden doors, you would then have had to make your way and try and get through the portcullis, which would have dropped down from here and would have prevented your access to the castle. Richard of York's son, Edward, took up his father's claim to the throne and was entertained by Neville's son at Midlam Castle. When Edward was crowned king, Neville was asked to raise his brother, Richard, Duke of Gloucester, here at the castle. But when relations between Neville and the king deteriorated, Neville imprisoned the king at the castle and helped Henry VI take the throne back. Gav, you need to come and have a look at it in here. Well, this cell is quite impressive just here. I'm pretty impressed, but oh my goodness. Now this to me, if you see over here, we've got a well. Uh -huh. So I'm going to assume that this was the kitchen because you would need a water supply and the amount of fireplaces that you've got in here as this well. This is the castle kitchens proper, isn't it? Just yeah. look at the size of the place. Yeah. It's absolutely on a monumental I imagine food when, cooking scale. When all it? the household was here or when they had the king here even, that this would have just been constant noise and fire and just a hive of activity yeah, to yeah. feed everybody in the yeah. castle. You, for a kitchen as well, you've got lots of nice windows that either so it would have been very well lit. Yeah, I was thinking that as well actually. What have we got over here? <gasps> Look at the size of the fireplace. That's a pretty large fireplace. It is, it? and I'm guessing it that looks like modern brickwork and that at the time it would have just been an open one. Should we see where it goes? There's a fireplace above it, we've got a chimney stack above it, so it looks as though the at fire... At some point that has been filled in and made yeah. into... Uh, I think this would have been an open fireplace at, at one point in time. Yeah. Well, you can see the chimney, you can see the opening up there, that the fire itself would have gone up and yeah. warmed the rooms above it as well, where everybody was feasting. Should we have a look upstairs and see what it would have been like upstairs when they were having the feast? Yeah, that'd be great. I want to go and check out the Great, great Hall area as well. So, yeah, yeah. So, should we go there now? Yeah, good Let's idea. Let's go. The noise as well. If you had all of the castle household here at the same time, or if they'd the got the there. king Beautiful, visiting, this would have just been an absolute hive of activity, wouldn't it? 
When Edward was again crowned king, he took Midland Castle from Neville and gave it to his brother, Richard, Duke of Gloucester. One of my favourite rooms in a castle is the Great Hall, and banquets held in this Great Hall would have been at the height of medieval excessive entertainment, with tables in position at either side of the Great Hall, with the Lord's Table at the high end, and with a central hearth for warmth and light. Even in its ruined estate, you can really imagine how spectacular it would have been in here. Following Edward IV's death, Richard was made Lord Protector of his son, Edward V. Richard had Edward and his brother housed in the Tower of London, declared Edward as illegitimate and asserted his own claim to the throne. Richard was eventually crowned as King Richard III and the young King Edward and his brother never made it out of the Tower alive. After Richard's death at the Battle of Bosworth, Henry VII took the castle and it remained in royal hands until James I sold it. By now its heyday was over and by the 1800s it was a ruin. And here he is, the man himself, King Richard III, last of the Plantagenets, killed in combat at the Battle of Bosworth in 1485, only to be rediscovered again 500 years later, buried beneath a car park in Leicester. He's now laid to rest in Leicester Cathedral. So then, Joe, Middleham Castle, yeah. I've had a fantastic day out today, and I can safely say that Middleham Castle has not disappointed. No, not at all. I've been um, blown away by not just what's left here to see, the fact that you've got so many little bits of history all in one place with the Motton Bailey, uh -huh. with the Norman Keep, with the 13th century edition by the Nevilles as well. Yeah, the, the ruins here at Middleham are actually quite vast. There's a lot yeah. to see, uh, there's a lot to explore. Um, I've had a really fantastic time here. And as we do on Go Visit Castles, it's time to give Midland Castle a Go Visit Castle score. And I think Midland gets a good solid Go Visit Castle score of eight. Yep, I think I agree with you on that, just because it ticks so many boxes of all the things that you want to see in a castle. And there's so much of it left as well to come and explore. Yep. Yep, I agree with you on that one. Um, if you've been to Midland, let us know what you think of the place. Let us know any interesting facts about the history of it that we might have missed out. But don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time on Go Visit Castles. See you next time. Bye-bye.